Gods and goddesses in training, welcome back to the channel. It's Uncle Makara. Today we're going to speak about how to break you out of a karmic pattern. So basically a karmic pattern can be spotted in many different ways. I believe there is an astrological way too. We're not going to cover that with uh, karmic debt numbers and so forth. 13, 14, 16, I think. Um, however, if you generally notice that there's a theme of your life, that seems to be your greatest flaw, your greatest weakness. And you had to face this thing for the longest time ever. There's probably a belief preventing you from actualizing what you really want. So once you develop a belief, you find what supports it. If I tell you, look around this room right now, and find all the blue things that you see and notice, right? You're gonna look around and you're gonna find what's blue. But now I tell you, do you remember what was gray? No, because you didn't look for gray, you looked for blue. You see what I'm saying? So when you start to change your belief, and I mean your core belief, okay? There's something called a core belief. Once you flip that around, and you understand the karmic lesson that you were meant to learn, it exposes it to the light and it disappears. And the way it disappears is through your own awareness of it. Awareness can create worlds, pathways, and new situations out of the blue. I'm telling you, awareness precedes control. It's only once you know about something that you can change it, basically, right? So now that you know, that I have this pattern, you know, I've noticed one myself, one of my deep core beliefs was that I don't belong and that I'm unlovable, okay? And that's kept me in um, vacating myself, going into my own world, you know, isolating myself constantly, like, uh, it's made me not want to socialize as much and, uh, you know, kind of stay indoors and but I'm starting to understand, like, the belief work is still very very solid. Now I've done a lot of work with my core wound and my core beliefs and uh, it's been a great distance that I've come, right? You guys have seen my transformation and so forth. Like every time, you know, that there's an edge that gets refined every time that you lean into the stuff, man. It's like initiations, right? Like shamanic initiations, like you go through the process of facing these patterns that don't serve you anymore and you start going, wait a second, I reclaim my power back, actually. I reclaim all of my power back towards me. These karmic patterns, you could also label your demons, okay? We all have uh, internal demons and angels that support and guide us. Sometimes, you know, the dark side can make people swim and just drown in the abyss at times. So we have to be very careful when dealing with the darker energies. However, at the same time, you understand that you have protection you have sovereignty, you have neutrality, you can always come back towards that sense of self. Basically uh, creating almost like an emotional ripcord, right? So I, when I'm doing work with like, let's say uh, spiritual things like chanting mantras, you know, repeating an N or you know doing something like this, I keep my fingers in a bowl of salt water at times to just keep, get me back into my senses again, or I'll put on like a silly Netflix cartoon show, right? To take my mind off of it. So there's these little ways, these little breaks that are almost reality checks, right? Reality checks to get you back into reality again. Because sometimes when we start doing this shadow work, we start to disassociate. We go very much into our heads and we avoid facing what's right in front of us. We, we're afraid of facing our greatest fears, right? But think of it like the Bogart from Harry Potter, how, you know, the biggest fear comes out of that closet and then you make yourself laugh through magic, through what? Changing your perception like this giant, you know, spider with roller skates. By using your own consciousness, your own imagination, you can actually release these old karmic patterns. But first of all, you've got to observe what it is, have the awareness of what it is. Is this really the truth? Expose that core belief for is it really true that people don't love you? Is it really true that you're not good enough? Is it really true that you're ineffective? Or are you being too harsh on yourself? Are you being too uh, perfectionist 
or are you being too much in your head or you know like find the lesson what is what is the lesson underneath the the karmic loop or pattern now if you need help with this and you need more clarity on this process you can always shoot me a message and do work with me to you know join the adepts program where i can help you uh, with my business partner and we heal you and take you through the process and get three free sessions like it's just the best deal right because it's a subscription fee you can cancel it at any time right but if you're just interested in a one-off session or you know a three-time session or something you can also shoot me a message but again it's going to be more expensive for you so that's a completely valid it's up to you i believe um right now i'm really interested in just getting those adept numbers up because you know, I'm going to start making more uh, curriculum content and so forth. And we're going to start, you know, really putting it out there. So really key, really important, guys. Next thing you want to understand is once you've identified this core belief, you then want to basically sit in a meditation and focus, like kind of zoom in on this core belief. Okay. The way you find a core belief is through the specific question. If this was 100% true, why is that so bad and what does it mean about me? Okay, that's the question you ask yourself to start digging further and further and further until you can't dig any further. And this is a process that I share with my high-end uh, students from across the world, okay? Uh, I teach people here in Kolkata in India right now, right? However, I have traveled abroad. I've gone to many different locations, different places, you know, met different people, different ate different cuisines all of it man uh but i want my motherland to really start to flourish that's why i've come back here you know and, and i'm building up a base here but let's just see man um manifesting canada maybe next year you know i missed the deadline this time so it, but it's happening man it's already it's already in the works right I, I feel like i'm already there i think doing the work with past lives is also very important if you've never done like past life regression or you've never delved into that stuff and you think it's a little bit esoteric i think just do it with the suspension of disbelief right just do it anyway because it might reveal something that you never might have understood right like for instance you know dolores cannon or whatever she created this like quantum trance uh experience right and it's basically what she's doing is channeling right but if you call it something like that right you think uh it's some kind of a scientific process or something like this, right? I mean, I'm a channeler, but I say I'm an automatic speaker, right? Because it's a form of automatism. You're losing your sense of consciousness and you're allowing whatever else, another frequency, another energy, another entity, some information from some other point of reference, you could say, is giving you these downloads, these streams of information, it's almost like a translation, right? So I have to translate as a channeler. That's why every channeler is different, right? Because being translated through the individual and what's coming through. Now, I've had to work really, really hard and crushing my ego down, like in those moments where I would notice Sumit Chatterjee would come in and like stop the channelings. You know, I would notice different moments where you know, I would come in and be like, hey, wait a second, but is that right to say? Or are you sure that you should write that little editing, the little editor in the head, right? The inner critic, it would sometimes come back online and I would notice it and immediately the being that I was working with would notice it and then it would calm down again. Shoo, and I would, I would let go and go through this process again, you know? But it's very, very interesting, man, because this stuff, I would have never guessed that this information and this stuff was even possible a few years ago, right? I could not ever fathom that this was the experience that I would be having. Of course, I had a lot of experience with freestyle rap and, you know, meditation and so forth. Yes, I've had that background experience, but putting it into practice and getting that visceral sense of a download and getting a deity to trust you so much that you open your heart and your mind, you manifest from that state. Like it's a very different experience than just, you know, doing a prayer here and there or just like, you know, yeah, I'll chant maybe a little bit and then I'll, you know, I'll wait a month. There's this heightened level of improvisational shamanism that I want you to adopt because that's really what's going to help you to break these karmic ties and these loops and patterns. And you might even notice karmic ties in people. This is why... You know, 
the women that I've dated or been in relationships, I truly, truly believe they were karmic ties towards me, that they were meant to meet a man like me in this lifetime and mold this man towards his greatest ascension, towards his greatest platform of uh, the divine masculine, right? And so in order for me to get my order back, I needed to face the chaos. You see, I was very, very right-brained a lot of my life growing up. I was very, like, tuned in, tapped in, wired, an empath kid, right? Very hyper-emotional, but I would never cry. Why is that? If I was such an empath, why did I never cry when I was a kid? You get that? I was very in my own internal world all the time. Imaginary friends, you name it, bro. I was talking to spirits probably at that age and people didn't even know it right i was probably having like some communication with the other side but people couldn't even recognize oh like, just a kid doing kid stuff right but the indigo child or whatever was in me I, I was like flipping you know in my mind i was like traveling wormholes and like going through dimensions and like just you know going on a pirate ship and you know magic school bus or whatever right like there was such a beauty and a joy and like a curiosity and a deep love that I had for creation and creativity itself, you know, the art of just transmuting something, some old idea, seeing it with new insights and then leaning into it and then create, just creating that moment, right? More creativity, creating more flow state, more flow state, creating more creativity, creating this beautiful feedback loop that can get you on the other side with the elixir of life, okay? I want you to really, really understand that if you have this karmic pattern, the way you see it is you zoom into what are your flaws and weaknesses in this lifetime. Of course, in the past, you might've had different challenges and so forth, and we don't have to cover that now, right? It's not relevant to your life right now. So for your life right now, let's cover that first. Is it health, wealth, relationships? What is the area in which you are struggling the most, okay? Maybe you have a money block. Were the ideas of money in your past good ones, you know, or, or were there like karmic ideas and, and thought imprints and like maybe a doubt and hesitation from other people that got in your head, right? Sometimes we create roles based on other people's opinions and we create loops based on other people's opinions too. You got to really understand that. What are you internalizing? Maybe something like a shitty comment you heard years ago that's still in your subconscious somewhere affecting your belief systems you get that so that's why i have to expose it to the light that's why i have to do the, a little bit of this deep dive this internal work and you can do it through therapy like i get it but again once you want the efficiency and understanding to do it yourself because i can buy you the fish or i can teach you how to be a fisherman I would much rather teach you how to be a fisherman so you don't have to rely on me all the time. You guys get that? So if you want to know more so how to really just break your chains of these karmic ties, reach out to me personally. Us, I hope you're having an incredible day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. Let's get it today, Upward Spiral Gang. May we never be the same again. Let's win.